He, he, him, his excellency, his excellency, Mr. Luke Williams, said it correctly. It is not, nay, it is not Australia. It's, please say it. Australia Day. Australia. Australia, mate. And I have a uh, quick lesson for you, my dear beloved listener on 98.4 Capital FM. We're going to play this song and then His Excellency, Mr. Luke Williams, the High Commissioner and uh, the, the head the head honcho of Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. That's the official title on your um, business card, I think. You're going to take us through a little bit of a vocab lesson for our listeners on uh, Australia slang. Good morning. So now you know, now you know. Will you be taking those books with you, ma- miss? And I was like, sorry, what? How much are they? And she's like, no, they're free. Just bring them back. And I was like, you do what? You can just have access to information. I am showing my age here, but I have His Excellency, Mr. Luke Williams from the Australian High Commission here. He's brought me a baby koala to celebrate Australia Day. Did you bring me a baby koala? I don't know. I'm looking to my staff here who look after me in that respect, but certainly not a live one. Okay, I don't want a dead one. <laughs> Do you know what? My favourite Australian animal. Oh, a wombat. I actually was Uh, about, I was this close. I was like, shall I give him the wombat teddy bear that resides next to me every night? And then I thought that was probably the wrong message to lead with. So that's my favourite Australian animal. Mine too. If you don't know what a wombat is, go and check it out. It's like this. It's like, it's basically a teddy bear. It was made to be a teddy bear. So tell us, what is Australia Day? Apart from the fact that, I don't know, is it a day to just hang out and chill and enjoy? Well, we always want to have an excuse for a public holiday. Yes. So it's a public holiday in Australia. Um, It's not without its controversy um, because it marks the occasion of the first landing of um, white people uh, in Australia. Wazungu. And so uh, it's a day that uh, does attract different um, viewpoints Mm -hmm. and it's especially... Um, sensitive for our Indigenous population, our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, who um, uh, it's often referred to as Invasion Day. Wow. So um, there has um, been a, um, a very concerted effort in recent years to ensure that uh, the concept of Australia Day is as inclusive as possible and recognising that it's about all Australians and the history especially of our indigenous population who were there 65,000 years before the arrival of uh, white people. Now, um, speaking of which, a a story recently came out in the news. Congratulations and thank you. I don't know if it came straight from your pocket. I, I, however, feel it might not have. $10 million the Australian government paid to buy the rights to the Aboriginal flag. And yes. I thought that was a lovely story. I felt it was a little bit sad that the artist was sitting on it going like, give me money. But then I was like, hey, it's art. Like, it, you know, it's struggle, right? Yeah, and it's an attempt to ensure that we're recognizing and embracing our indigenous heritage. And it's, um, it's so important uh, for us. Um, so, yeah, it, it is a day that uh, we mark. Uh, with a public holiday, uh, there's always also announcement of uh, honours uh, awards for Australians of the Year. Uh, this year, uh, the Prime Minister announced overnight it's uh, Dylan Alcott, who's um, a famous disability tennis player. Nice. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of focus on uh, those awards as well. Um, and it's you know, g- generally seen as a time to reflect and uh, spend time with family. And friends. And to enjoy. I will say I spent f- three years studying in Melbourne and then one extra year making bank, baby. Australia is a lovely place to work. I had about three jobs because I am Kenyan. I'm a hustler. But they pay really well. I don't know if you know this because you've been out of there for a while. Guys pay well in Australia. All the visa applications are slowly coming in, <laughs> slowly coming in. Is there a push to build constantly um, to build kind of a, a share between Kenyans and Australians? Have I mean, I know in my time, my time, there was a lot of uh, students going over to university. Is that still happening? Yes, I mean, the COVID pandemic has uh, disrupted that um, uh, naturally enough. But, you know, Australia is very much a country of migration. You know, we're constantly welcoming new waves of um, migrants uh, from around the world. As you said, it's a melting pot. Uh, For those who haven't experienced um, Melbourne uh, city centre or Sydney city centre, 
um, it's not what you would be expecting. It is a real um, a multicultural affair there. And certainly um, uh, over the years, many, many thousands of Kenyans have studied in Australia. And uh, I think word of mouth has generated uh, increasing interest. Pre-COVID, um, we used to have on average, on any day of the year, 4,000 or more Kenyans studying in Australia. Um, and this is across the university network, especially at the postgraduate level. Um, and every Kenyan I meet back here, who's an alumni of an Australian university, has really fond memories of their time in Australia. They commented how welcomed they were um, and how included they were. And so I think that reflects positively on uh, the Australian character and um, Australian culture. Um, and so with the reopening of Australia now again to uh, international travel, which has just been happening since uh, uh, late December last year, uh, we're uh, asking and uh, wanting uh, students to return, including from Kenya. Be careful what you wish for. I, I, my, the, the WhatsApp line is already blowing up. People are already asking, how do we apply for a student visa? I will tell you this. Perth is basically baby Nairobi, which is why I avoided it like the plague. I went to Melbourne. But uh, we will tell you more about Australia and how you can get there. I'm going to play you a little bit of a treat. I want you to stand up. Yep, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Could you just do one lunge for me? Yep, and now some jumping jacks. That's right, it's physical with Olivia Newton-John. Good morning. Things are, things are going from bad to worse in here. I called His Excellency, the High Commissioner of Australia, Mr. Luke Will Williams, babe. Then I called him mate, and I just, I, I'm going to stop talking in a minute, in a minute. I'm having all of these memories coming to me. It's all coming back to me now. 98.4 Capital FM, your best mix of music. Clearly your best mix of madness. Uh, His Excellency, Mr. Luke Williams, were you did your media team prepare you for the r ridiculousness that was breakfast on Capital Radio? Absolutely not. <laughs> Someone's going to get fired, mate. No, you can't fire anyone on Australia Day. Australia Day is all about celebration and it's all about inclusion and, and just looking for the good, right? We're looking for the ho hope. Absolutely. The hope. Yes. Did you hear the hope, the slang? So I'm getting so many memories coming back from um, my time in Australia. I was one of, I, full disclosure, full disclosure, I only hung out with Kenyans and Zimbabweans for a, about the first year because I was too scared of all of these Australians. I was like, oh my gosh, they speak really loudly and really aggressively. And if I'm scared, everyone else must be scared. But I will say this, full disclosure, two of my most favorite, favorite, favorite best friend people, creatures are Australians. It took me a while to fit in because actually I to be honest I'd never seen so many white people in one concentration in my life. No joke. It was the first time I'd left Africa. I didn't want to go follow in my sister's foot footsteps to go to uni in South Africa. I wanted something different and I got to Australia and I was like, "Wow. Okay." And I took my boyfriend from Kenya to Australia, the land of beautiful men and good weather. What a waste. And he's probably listening. Good morning. You know who you are. But talking about Australia, there are a lot of um, a lot of messages coming in on WhatsApp. 0701-984-984. If you have a question for His Excellency, the High Commissioner, a lot of these questions are visa related. Visa related. Now, how do we get, how do we get adopted by an Australian? And if not, how do we get to come and study and live in Australia? Because I know that's what our main focus was when we were there. <laughs> Well, it's the online world now. Yep. And uh, you only have to go onto the Australian government website mm -hmm. um, to find your way through the advice and guidance on how to apply, whether you want to apply as a, uh, an international student. Um, there are also skilled migration uh, programs. There are, of course, uh, family reunion programs as well. So my best advice to everyone who's interested is to, to go and uh, check out the, uh, the Australian government uh, websites. Um, and as I said earlier, um, you know, we are reopening to, to international travel. Um, for a while there, Australia had one of the you know, strongest lockdowns going on mm. in terms of um, uh, border controls uh, because of COVID-19 um, but we're optimistic going forward that um, 
now with the vaccination rates in Australia being so high, we've now got uh, 93% of everyone aged over 16 is now double vaccinated um, and booster shots are happening. So we're now much more confident of um, being able to have uh, international travel resume. Now, I, I was raised on Neighbours. It was on KTN at 6.30 every night, and that was my reference point for Australia. I have to ask you this. Have you ever watched Border Security? I have. <laughs> and have you ever been busted at the airport? Never. <laughs> Are you sure? Even How often do you go back, by the way? Um, well, I haven't been back in Australia since uh, November 2020. Okay. Um, I'll probably go back later this year. But you know, while I'm on posting here representing Australia, um, my commitment and responsibilities are here to uh, not just Kenya, but I look after you know, six countries in East Africa. So mm. um, it, I'm very busy in this part of the world, and this is where I want to be while I'm, uh, while I'm uh, posted here. Well, we're going to let you stay. We like you. We like anyone who comes in with an ACDC T-shirt to 98.4 Capital FM. So let me ask you this. How long have you been in Kenya? 14 months. Oh, so you're a baby. Okay. All right. Have you learned any Swahili? You knew it was coming. The question was coming. Uh, only um, Asante San. Very good. That's fine. We'll take Jumble. that. I'm going to play you a Kenyan song because <laughs> I actually interviewed this person. We do love him. He is one of our gems and he was named this. His, his artist name is this because of an Australian cartoon that he grew up on. So Australian-Kenyan relations are fully sick, mate. We'll be right back after this. Blinky Bill, no word of a lie. He's called Blinky Bill because of an Australian cartoon of a koala. That I didn't make that. I swear I didn't make that up. 98.4 Capital FM, your best mix of music. I'm here in studio with His Excellency, Mr. Luke Williams. I keep calling him babe slash mate. It's really embarrassing. If they fire me, come and find me tomorrow. He is um, the High Commissioner of Australia. Yes, to Kenya. Right. I got that right. Well done, Davina. <sighs> okay, it's a lot of coffee. It's a lot of coffee. Rico, of course, you brought the important questions. Fred, you want to know. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. My listeners are very intelligent and they are very hardcore. Uh, Rico wants to know. What official bilateral trade bodies exist to promote import-export opportunities and remote working for opportunities in Australia? Good luck. No, very good question. Uh, there is an Australia-Kenya uh, trade group that um, has been operating for many years now. Um, it uh, has a, an Australian chapter um, based in Perth. Um, they're looking also to establish... Um, a formal official uh, Kenyan chapter as well um, but in addition it's got membership from both Kenya and Australia and there are uh, also some state-based uh, bilateral uh, trade groups there uh, as well so um, that is already happening um, and provides an opportunity for you know, exchange of uh, ideas and views I participated Late last year in um, a virtual uh, meeting uh, comprising that membership. So um, it's again online and um, uh, very active and, and I'm really pleased with how much um, progress it's making to, to help you know, solidify what is what I think are really um, a progressing bilateral relationship. You know, Kenya and Australia... Um, it's one of the few relationships where I think there are no irritants in the relationship. I can't think of any problems that we have with each other. Um, my, my boyfriend says I'm very irritating, so I'm going to think of some. But I think, I think you're probably right. Yeah. I, I think you're probably right there. Uh, what do you find the similarities between Kenya and Australia? Um, we both love sport. That's true. Um, I think we also, as cultures... Um, are very outward looking. Um, we both border the Indian Ocean. We're neighbours. Where, where? That's right? true. We're neighbours. Weather and and yeah. And I think we we our values are quite similar in the sense that we uh, uh, have a similar interest in what we call a rules based global order. 
Um, and I think uh, that sort of um, similarity uh, is a great bonding uh, component of, of um, our relationship. I mean, trade-wise, we it's modest, um, but uh, there's great potential for it to grow. And I just think the people-to-people links as they uh, strengthen over time, especially with so many students going to Australia and coming back with um, a very, what I think is a heart- heartfelt commitment to keeping their contacts um, with uh, Australia, that um, it's going to be very positive for us all going forward. It is pretty cool because we both went to Monash University in in Melbourne. Indeed. And um, I was like, wait, there's a Monash University in South Africa now. It just it seems to be spreading its 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 lovely, glorious Great Barrier Reef tentacles, Australia. Right. It's it's a good vibes place, and we really need good vibes now. The problem is, it's far. Yes. Well, yeah, it is far. Let me tell you something. You have not felt pain, like you've not felt jet lag. Like I remember going via Dubai to Perth and then being spat out in Melbourne and I was like good lord it feels like a different world because it's just it's different time zones but in a way that's really cool as well because the trouble I got into because I was like so far away from home right I will confess that all of my friends had um the struggle to stay on. They were all trying to get this permanent residency, temporary residency. I know you don't want to talk about visas and things like that. Are there, I mean, out of all of Africa, how many, like, is there a country that most students try and stay? Most, like, I know there were a lot of Sri Lankans when I was there, but out of Africa, is it, is it the Nigerians that are trying to stay most? Is it the South Africans or is it us? That's a very good question. I don't know that I have the answer to that wait, one. Wait. Um, you know, Kenyans are one of the most numerous um, uh, groupings of African students in Australia, um, but we don't have a, a, you know, an issue or a challenge around people wanting to 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 stay against rules or anything like that. I mean, there's lots of uh, Kenyans who actually went to Australia to study and decided they want to wanted to stay there they got married they did had kids they did they did um um and uh, sort of there's a constant you know traveling backwards and forwards um so uh you, you know i don't think that's really an issue mm. um but we're you know i think with australian education um we're very keen to promote ourselves as a uh, an alternative to some of the big players like the United States and and Europe and so forth. So we're very much um, in competition with them, trying to to demonstrate that um, value for money. We think we're competitive and and that we have a really good product to offer. And certainly every Kenyan student who's been to Australia comes back very positive about their experience there. Let me tell you, you come back not with an American accent. That's great. My mom was like, come back with an Australian accent. That's fine. But uh, but I do... I. Australia was brilliant for me to go to uni because I, I, I'm so lazy. I didn't want to do any extra exams like SATs and things like that. So it was such a logical option for me, Australia. And I, I worked about like three jobs while I studied. It was very, very cool, very simple. I worked at the the trippiest, trippiest morning I ever had. I did the opening at, uh, I worked at Safeway Supermarket in the deli section. God forgive me. And it was 5.30 in the morning, very dark in Melbourne. And I unload this box from the truck and I start opening it. And it was fish from Kisumu. And I'm in the middle of Melbourne and I'm like, what exactly is this world? But that's how small our world actually is. Nile perch from Lake Victoria crazy. is one of the most common fishes in, sold in Australia. It's crazy. It is crazy. You need to follow this man who has deigned to come into the Capital FM studio in an ACDC t-shirt. Oh, I guess you're not working today because it's Australia Day. I am working. This is work. Is this work? <laughs> Every morning I say to myself, this is definitely not work. Well, it's a public holiday in uh, Australia, but it, we, we haven't declared it a public holiday here. Are in, you going to continue Kenya. wearing that shirt throughout the day? I'm just asking. No, I have Good. to, I have to get special. into my suit after this. Oh, gross. Now, what parties are you having tonight? And am I invited? What? Um, tonight, I'm not aware of any parties as such. We're still sort of um, very sensitive to the... 
the uh, the Omicron variant right now. So we, I can I can bring my own bevies, mate. But, like I can um, bring. But uh, um, I know that uh, Australians are gathering um, uh, to celebrate. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, and so um, it's uh, it's always an opportunity for. Australians who now, you know, here in Kenya, uh, there are a lot of dual citizens. Uh, so a good part of our Australian expatriate community here are Kenyan Australians. And so they gathered together. Last time we gathered was um, for Melbourne Cup. Wait, where? Remember? So we I, were at Melbourne Cup. DJ Adrian at, played. Yeah, at Wama. Wah, yeah. Wama, shout out Wama, we do love them. And uh, I have a song for you because we're almost out of time. Thank you so much for coming into 98.4 Capital FM. I'm so sorry if I scared you. I'll have less coffee li- next time. But please come back and please wear a different shirt. Maybe a Missy Higgins shirt. If you get that reference. If you know, you know. Do you know Missy Higgins? I know Missy H- Higgins <gasps> I love very Missy well. Missy Higgins. Yeah. This song is for you on Australia Day. Happy Australia Day. Follow His Excellency on at AUS, that's Oz, HC Kenya on Twitter. Or I'm going to try my best to get his personal line and I'll send it to you. Good morning. 